Sola was a complex character in the history of Rome, and it is difficult to brand him as either a good or bad influence on its development. While his major actions had negative consequences, they could all be argued to have been done for the greater good of Rome. It is likely that had he failed to act and instead been a footnote in the history of Marius's consulship, that Rome would still have resembled a dictatorship, and that it would have lost its respect for tradition and its republican constitution. The most prominent and consequential trait of Sulla was his pragmatism. It was clearly a benefit to him, and enabled all of his actions and his alleged defense of the republic, so it is most accurately labeled a virtue. During his rule, he respected traditions and laws, at least at a superficial level, but was willing to break them when he perceived it as the best course of action. Obviously, his first invasion of Rome was an example of this. He broke an age-old tradition and surprised even Marius, who had manipulated the Senate and broken the intents of the rules of the Republic to consolidate power. This allowed him to end the rule of Marius, after which he restored the consulship and allowed Rome to return essentially to business as usual. When this consulship was again usurped, he imposed strict order after his second invasion. Invasion. In isolation, his invasions would of course have been considered wrong, but had Marius been allowed to continue ruling Rome, and had Sulla done nothing, the Republic would still have been transformed into a dictatorship in all but name. Sulla's consolidation of power was gradual and in response to provocation, so Wood could make an argument that his actions were what he thought was best for Rome, independent of his desire for power. A dictatorship is undesirable. But Sola's was technically within the constitutional limits of the Republic, and protected Roman tradition. Sola's most prominent vice, his desire for personal gain, corrupted this pragmatic defense of Rome, and because of it, is, it is questionable whether he truly cared about tradition, or was simply trying to grant legitimacy to his own consolidation of power. He is said to have believed he is blessed by Venus, and therefore possessed divine luck, Personal luck is not congruous with a selfless defense of Rome. It is also said that he secretly ordered the murder of the commander of an army to gain his command for himself. These actions indicate that he was likely motivated more by his own success than by protecting the Republic. He also apparently had no problem murdering political rivals after his second invasion, clearly in opposition to the idea of a Republic, and he went even further by sanctioning murders for his own gain and the gain of his supporters. While the dictatorship was technically sanctioned under law, it had fallen out of favor as incompatible with Roman ideals, so the fact that Sola would see such a role indicates that he was unconcerned with such ideals, but wanted a government that was seen as legitimate. I personally think this was the case. Sola gained far too much from conquest of Rome for it to be purely for its preservation. While his earlier acts were justifiable, I think the imposition of a dictatorship after his second invasion of Rome corrupts Sulla's legacy. He would have been a better man had he truly sought the protection of the Republic. It seems that its main issue was the pursuit of gain by consuls, so limits to their power and an increase of the power of the Senate could have been a viable alternative strategy. Increasing the power of the people also would have increased the government's accountability. It is uncertain whether such an achievement could have happened, and it certainly would have been contrary to Rome's tradition of individual greatness. However, a society and government kept in line by the military is not Republican, and it was disingenuous for Sola to suggest that he had protected the Republic through his actions.